welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lorena and I'm a first grade teacher in the state of Mississippi. Okay, so in this week's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all of the insect things that I'm doing with my first graders. Um, as much as I hate insects and like find them creepy and like annoying, it is one of my favorite units to teach perhaps because there are no live insects and everything that we're doing is like more informational and we have like, I do have like little insect toys and stuff like that. Um, so it's a very fun unit to teach. They're all really like invested in insects and stuff like that. And when they see one outside, they go kind of like crazy, like, oh my God, it has six legs. So it's really exciting to see that like what we're learning in class, they're able to kind of like apply it to the outside world. I do have some kiddos who are spooks. What I've been telling them is we're learning about insects so that we know what their purpose is, why they're buzzing in our ears, how to keep ourselves maybe safe from them and things like that. So that seems to work with my kiddos who are a little bit spooked. But I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to start sharing with you the centers that we're doing this week for both literacy and math. Alright, so something that I've been doing a lot this year is listening centers using QR codes. It is great. So, I have noticed that I have found some free ones on TPT, but whatever it's linked to is usually safe share and it's blocked by my district. So, I have to make my own. So pretty much I just got like a picture of a little iPad, a PNG, and I found some read alouds on YouTube and I made my own little cards using PowerPoint. It was super simple and then like a QR code generator, which is absolutely free. And I'll put a little clip um, at the end of this to show you how to make them. So I just picked some different insect books. I went on Pinterest and I said insect books for first graders and it gave me a whole lot and then I found them on YouTube. So what the kids are doing is they're scanning this on the tablet and then they're listening to whatever book that they choose. And like I've been doing for the past few because I've been putting three like recording sheets in pocket sheet folders and they're going to be able to pick how they want to retell the story, whether it's um, telling me about their favorite part, elements of the story, so the character, the setting, they can draw it or they can write about it. I find that most of them like to draw and that's totally fine because it's listening comprehension and then retelling the story again in a different format. So that is the center and this is a staple center so it's one that I don't really have to review. What does change every week um, are the little books. However, if I do incest for two weeks, I can reuse this again because they haven't read through all of the books. Um, I usually tell them to just pick one, that way they have more time to focus on it and really listen to it in depth and understand what they're listening to. So my next center is a QR center too. So I found one on CPT that was free, which kind of inspired this idea. And essentially what they were doing was they were going to be scanning a code um, based on an insect. And they would read like an informational text. Now, once I scanned it, I realized that the text was way too hard for them. Um, it had a lot of academic vocabulary and I was like, no, we cannot do this. Um, and it wasn't as like, engaging or so what I did was I made my own QR codes um, in the classroom that's why it's black and white so it was super simple I just used PowerPoint um, and I and once they scan this code it takes them to a story on get epic which is informational text and it's reading the story to them so it's helping so it's differentiated for all of my learners my higher learners can just turn off the audio and read it themselves and then my lower level students can listen to the audio that's being read to them and so they're picking an insight that they want to learn more about and then they're using like a little graphic organizer where they're telling me four facts about what they learned about the insect and then they're writing their little main topic right here. And I'm telling them, you're gonna read the story and then you're gonna teach me something. And I've explained to them, you're not just telling me the ladybug is red and black, you're telling me more information, things that maybe we wouldn't normally know. What do they eat? Where do they live? What do they do in their free time? Um, things like that. So this was super quick. Again, this on PowerPoint and using a QR code generator. And you can do this with any theme. If you're doing like ocean theme or dinosaurs, you can pick can just change the topic, clip art, or whatever image you're using, and they're really engaged because you're giving them the choice of what they're learning about, as opposed to just telling them you're learning about walking sticks, you're learning about ladybugs or whatever. So that's another idea. I'm using this for it. Another time that we're doing, and we've done this for a few themes, um, a few topics, is this little like prepositional book, Where's the Bug? So what I have them do is they're just using these little stickers that I ordered on Amazon. And as you can tell, we've been using them quite a bit. I've used them for many different centers. Um, so they are placing the book. So if it says the ladybug is inside the jar, they're gonna go ahead and place it inside. I also tell them to like add details to their insects so they're not just placing the sticker on there, but they're adding the abdomen and the thorax and the antennas and different parts of the insect to kind of go over parts of an insect in a way that's very informal and fun and they're getting you know, little creative little juices flowing. So 
that was another center. So the next center is my sensory center. So what I'm doing is just using one of my sensory bins that I've been using since April, probably even before that. Um, and I just put some insects in there. I found them at Hobby Lobby. I could have ordered them on Amazon, but I waited way too late and it wasn't gonna get here in time. I went to Dollar Tree, I didn't find any insects. I went to Hobby Lobby and they had they had two options. However, the smaller option, they they had it, but they were sold out. So I had to get the bigger option, like the little, the jumbo insects, um, which the kids are loving. I also got some pieces of felt and they're gonna be doing some writing with it. So what they're gonna be doing is they're going to be picking an insect from the sensory bin. And I tell them, is your insect in grass or in water? So they place the, their little insect right in front of them. And then they're going to write about their insect using this paper. I just used um, PowerPoint for this. I didn't find exactly what I was looking for, so I just quickly made it myself using PowerPoint. Um, and then they're writing about their insect. So I tell them to tell me a story about their insect. What is your insect doing? Is it going to the park today? Is it sitting on grass? Is it hanging out with friends? That way they're not just telling me facts because that's another center. But they're doing some creative writing with it. But the stories that they're coming up with are great. I was hoping that the center itself was going to be like a good one. I was going to get a lot of great writing pieces and I am so impressed by their writing. The only thing is that they do want to play with the insects after. So if you plan on doing this, make sure you tell them and model how to play appropriate with them. And I learned that the hard way the first day, they were just like putting insects in each other's faces. And I was like, no, 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 no. So the next day and every day after that, I was kind of telling them, okay, you're not going to be putting insects in other people's face. This is how we play with them. Um, and after that, they just got it. They just needed a little bit more modeling. The next center is a write the room center. So I have just some little insects cards all around the room. And I got this for free on TPT. I will link it below. So I combine like two recording sheet ideas into one using PowerPoint. So what they'll be doing is just going around the room and writing down the insect's name based on the number. And when they're done, so like a little extension activity, is they're gonna tell me which insect is your favorite and why. And I'll link this below as well um, in case you wanna use it. I thought it was great. They're not just recording it and they're not just writing any sentence, they're actually answering a specific question that I have laid out for. So those are the insect literacy centers that I planned for this week and that we're currently doing. Now let me show you the math centers. So I did have a bit of a hard time finding specific math centers. Um, that were like insect based and standard based to first grade skills. So I had, to, so I did have to make this one. Um, and this is just adding two digit numbers. So I did this on PowerPoint, which is like my best friend lately. So I just added some insect clip art and I made it and then I did it like this as well. That's way, um, this way they have two ways that they can show and add these two digit numbers. So they pull out a card and then they solve the problem. And I did make a recording sheet. Um, I kind of put here tens and ones because I do feel like that helps them um, when they're looking at some of my students still get confused with like tens and ones. So this way they know, okay, T is for tens and that's the first number. And this is a really quick and easy center that they can review um, some of the addition skills that we've been going over. The next center is a little collect them all bugs, 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 and this is free on TPT. And essentially what they're gonna be doing is they're just gonna be looking for insect task cards and they're gonna be telling me what time it is and writing it down next to the corresponding insect. So time is like a skill that we've learned in the past, but we're just reviewing it now during centers. All right, let's see. I got eight, which is a quad. Did it touch the six yet? No, so 5.30, you got it. This next center is just a super simple, we're learning about shapes and composite shapes. I don't know if I'm saying if it's composite or whatever other way I heard in a video, but nonetheless, we're learning all about shapes and things like that. So they're going to be building an insect and they're going to be telling me how many of each shape they used. And I just put this in the sheet protector. Um, that way we can keep reusing it over and over again. Some of them have built as many as five insects and they have a great time with it. So if you're looking for a quick and easy shape review, you can do this with literally anything. So whatever thing you're doing, you can definitely adapt it to that. And you can make this on your own. But I will also link it below for you in case you need it. And the last 
insect kind of ever doing it's all about measurement and this was free on tpt so i love this because it has like the starting and the end point for them um and i think i shared this in a video that i did last year for kindergarten and i was able to use it again for first grade which was amazing um except that for this one Except this time they didn't need as much support because it's in a skill that they've already been exposed to. So this was great. So what they did was they just measured it and then they wrote it down on their recording sheet and then it has two extension questions. So that is it for our centers. Now let me show you one quick activity that we are doing. That's like a craft base. We're still currently working on it. So we read in the tall, tall grass. I was able to get the book from our school library, but there are so many read aloud options on YouTube. And I just got two shades of green paper. They glue, I cut um, this lighter green in half. They glued it, not the whole thing. And then we just kind of cut it this way. And then they made a little insect that they chose and we're going to kind of hide it in the tall, tall grass. So that will be that. And then they're gonna be doing like a little writing piece in the tall, tall grass. They're gonna tell me what they see what insect they see in the plant saw grass and also made a little tree map with like insects can have an R so they're going to be using that to kind of add more to their writing because they are going to second grade so we're going to be using our tree maps um, to help us write and I will show you what the final product looks like so that is all for this week's video all about insects um, I hope you enjoyed it and you're able to take away some ideas whether you're doing insects now later or in the future so until next time I will see you all soon bye Try. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile? Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on, I put my feet up.